Hey guys, welcome to my new online talk. Today I want to talk a little bit about supplements. So I'll be going over all of the supplements which I use on a regular basis and we'll be looking at the potential benefits of each of them. Before we start looking at each of the supplements individually, there's a few things that we need to understand um, in general. So firstly, let's look at a definition of the word supplement. If something is supplementary to something else, then it kind of optimizes the efficiency of that thing without actually uh, replacing that thing itself. So from the context of diet and nutrition, a food supplement can improve your health, improve your performance if it is used in conjunction with a good diet. You shouldn't use supplements as a replacement for a healthy diet, but if they're both used together, that way you can get the best possible results. If you know deep down in your heart that your diet is quite poor, and you know that you could do something to improve your nutrition quite easily, then you shouldn't even be considering taking supplements yet. Make sure that you optimize your nutrition in your diet, make sure that you're eating well at least 80% of the time, and then if you're still not quite getting the results that you need, then you can start looking at taking supplements. If you're training gymnastics as a child or as a young teenager, you shouldn't really need to consider taking supplements yet at this stage. When you're at this age, your body is really fresh and young and able to recover on its own, so you shouldn't need any additional help as long as you eat well and get plenty of rest. If you're training gymnastics into your late teens, your 20s, your 30s, or even older ages than that, then it might become a little bit more necessary to look at taking supplements, because when you're this age, your bones, your joints, and your muscles become a little more susceptible to injury, and it can take you a little bit longer to recover session to session. So before we continue, it is important to understand and consider the role of supplements within fair sport. So if you are a professional athlete who is likely to be drug tested, it's really, really critical that you understand exactly what you're allowed to put in your body and what you're not allowed to put in your body. None of the supplements which I'm going to talk about today are banned in competitive sport, or at least not in competitive gymnastics. But there have been rare circumstances in the past where an athlete has tested positive for a substance which they were not aware they were putting in their body. Unfortunately, the rules dictate that an athlete is liable and is responsible for anything that is found in their body, regardless of whether they're aware whether they took it or not. So you have to be really, really careful with making sure that the supplements you take are pure. Some supplements are less pure and less reliable than others and, be and can become contaminated. So although there are many benefits to taking supplements, a, make sure that you check the banned substance list for your sport very, very closely. B, check the ingredients list for the supplements which you are taking and check that there's no crossover between those two lists. And C, make sure that you're sourcing your supplements from a reliable producer to make sure that they're pure and high quality. Finally, it is important for us to consider supplementation from a scientific point of view. So nutrition is a very complex science because Different people react to different substances in different ways and different substances act differently on their own and they act differently when they react with different substances. So a supplement might have a different effect on the body when it's taken on its own compared to when it's taken with other supplements or as part of a whole diet and then one thing might happen for one person and another thing might happen for another person. So the result of this is that hundreds and hundreds of studies on nutrition and supplementation have been uh, published. A lot of the results of those studies are quite mixed. So a lot of the knowledge that we have about nutrition and supplementation is not hard fact, but is more the result of kind of educated guesswork. That being said, even if there isn't hard proof for a lot of these things, for most supplements we do have a pretty good idea of what they can do for most people inside the body. And for most supplements we can at the very least adopt the it can't do any harm approach. So it might be that these supplements don't produce exactly the same effect in the body that we think they will, but at the very least they won't make anything worse. So I believe that for any motivated athlete, the prospect that something might help but definitely won't make things worse should be kind of enough for us to consider doing it. Okay, with all that being said, I will now go over each of the supplements individually and look at their specific uh, benefits. There might be some supplements here which you choose not to use, there might be some supplements here which you will get great benefit from. It really depends on your personal situation and your personal goals. So let's start off with fish oil. Fish oil is really high in omega-3 fatty acids, which a lot of studies have suggested is really important for cardiovascular health and can also help keep your joints uh, really lubricated and healthy. So I started taking fish oil capsules when I was a teenager because I recognised the health benefits of fish but I really couldn't stand eating fish. Um, 
I'm now at a point in my life where I'm a little bit uh, less fussy with my nutrition, but I still don't eat fish very often, so I take the capsules almost every day. If you're somebody who eats oily fish on a regular basis, you might have less need for this um, capsule than somebody who's a bit fussy like myself. If you are vegan or vegetarian, or you don't like to take fish in in any way for other reasons, then there are um, non-fish alternatives that kind of yield the same results. So I would recommend either linseed oil or flaxseed oil, which are very, very high in omega-3 but contain no fish. Next, we have uh, glucosamine and chondroitin. So glucosamine and chondroitin are two separate compounds, but they're often kind of packaged together into the same tablet because they seem to have a synergistic effect, whereby they both work together to produce the same end goal. So a lot of studies have suggested that taking glucosamine and chondroitin can help kind of nourish and protect joint cartilage. So this is really, really important for gymnastics because years and years of heavy landings really takes a toll on the joint cartilage, particularly in the knees and ankles. So taking this might help keep your joints a little bit healthier. Next, we have got uh, calcium and magnesium. This particular one has got zinc in as well, but I really take it mainly for the calcium and magnesium. Again, calcium and magnesium are two separate compounds, but in this version of the supplement, uh, they're packaged together into the same tablet. Calcium is really important for bone health, which again, with lots of heavy landings over time, can be really, really important. And a lot of studies have suggested that magnesium can aid muscle function, muscle health, the ability for muscles to contract strongly. So all of that, again, really, really important for sport and performance. Although my diet is generally pretty good, I do like to take on top of those things uh, one multivitamin capsule per day, just to make sure that I leave no nutritional stones unturned. So for the most part, having slightly too much of something is generally not really a problem, but being deficient in a certain mineral or compound can lead to problems. So I like to take the multivitamin once a day, just so that I have peace of mind to know that each of the little vitamins and minerals which I need have pretty much been hit. Getting the right amount of all of these vitamins and minerals is really, really important for all of the little reactions and processes which are going on inside your cells. And amongst many, many other things, if you're deficient in vitamins and minerals, it can lead to immune system suppression. So it means that your body is less able to fight off um, infections, you're more likely to get ill, and obviously if you're ill, you're less able to train well, you might not even be able to train at all. Okay, so the supplements that I've covered so far are kind of my staple supplements that I take pretty much every day of the year to try and keep my body as healthy as possible year round. But there are other supplements which I use on a slightly less regular basis, so I want to talk a little bit about those supplements as well now. On some days of the week, I take a uh, caffeine supplement, now, in a lot of ways, I wish that I wasn't as reliant on caffeine as I am, but the truth is that I just live quite a hectic, quite an um, exhausting lifestyle. I'm coaching gymnastics full-time, 40 hours a week, and I'm trying to train between three and five times a week on top of that. So sometimes, first thing in the morning, I just need that little bit of caffeine to get me going and to make sure that I have a good training session. I've always lived by the philosophy that something like a caffeine tablet Although I wish I was less reliant on it, it is the lesser of two evils. I would much rather take something like caffeine and have a productive and safe training session than go without the caffeine, have a training session where I'm feeling fatigued, my mind's not in the game, I'm less likely to have a productive session, but I'm also more likely to make silly mistakes and get injured. Generally, taking something like a caffeine pill is a better alternative to taking something like an energy drink or a pre-workout because if you're taking these things, you're getting all the added sugar, all the added other extra compounds that are in there as well, whereas if you take this, you're just literally getting the caffeine, which is what you actually want. Lastly, what I would say is that a lot of the caffeine pills which I've come across come in 200 milligram doses. Now, for me, that is way too much. If I take 200 milligrams of caffeine at a time, I feel very shaky, I feel very weak, and I get uh, a lot less benefit from the product. So I've kind of gotten into the habit of taking half a tablet at a time, just biting a little bit off, and then I seem to get the appropriate dose. So this is just a case of learning what is right for you. If you're somebody who's bigger than me, or somebody who, for example, drinks coffee every day, you might have more tolerance to caffeine than I do, and you might cope with a 200 milligram tablet, no problem. But if you're anything like me, you need a smaller dose to perform optimally. So again, it's just a case of working out what is best for you, what is best for your body. So another supplement which I'm not taking at the moment, but which I normally take in the winter months, is a vitamin D supplement. Vitamin D is formed when sunlight hits the skin, 
Sunlight hitting the skin causes chemical reactions inside your body which enable your body to produce vitamin D. So if you're not getting much sunlight, like in the winter months, vitamin D supplementation can be beneficial. Also from a gymnastics point of view, if you're a gymnast or a gymnastics coach, typically we spend a lot of time indoors, so you might not get much sunlight. And people who are deficient in vitamin D often experience uh, weakening of the bones and weakening of the muscles, which obviously for a gymnast is not really an option. If you're somebody who is outdoors a lot of the time, or if you're somebody who lives in a very hot and sunny part of the world, then you might not need to take this supplement at all. Let's talk a little bit now about my actual workout supplementation. So my go-to post-workout supplement is good old whey protein. I like to have uh, natural and unflavoured whey so that I know it's not arriving with loads of extra sugar, extra calories, extra stuff inside it. I'll typically add some flavour to it so it's not really, really bland, but I like to control how much I'm actually putting in. There's a bit of a misconception with whey protein that taking it will just make you enormous. And that's not necessarily the case if you use it in moderation. There's a lot of research that suggests that if you take whey protein within an hour or two of a training session, then that is best for promoting recovery and making sure you're not too sore the, the following day. Although having a high protein meal would have exactly the same effect as taking a protein shake, often the shake is a little more convenient. You might not be able to make and eat a meal straight away after your training session, whereas your shake is there, you can take it straight away and you can make sure that you don't miss that anabolic window. During some of my heavier training sessions, I also sip on a intra-workout concoction, which is composed of a mix of electrolytes and BCAAs. So, electrolyte powder is quite important during heavier training sessions, because if you're working hard, you're sweating, you're losing salts and electrolytes through your sweat, so it's important to replace those and make sure that you're hydrated and functioning properly. BCAA stands for branch chain amino acids, so it's essentially a form of rapidly digesting protein which you can take during your more intense training sessions. If you're working really, really hard and for quite a long time, it is possible that your body will start burning up your own muscle tissue to continue fueling the exercise. So if you take BCAAs, you can make sure that your muscle mass and your strength is preserved and the BCAA helps to promote recovery and reduce soreness in much the same way that the whey protein after the session does. So the last two supplements in my collection are supplements which I only use acutely in the build up to a competition or a similar event where I want to be performing at my best. So the goals of regular training and the goals of a competition are very, very different. In a training session, you want to break your body down, force it to adapt and grow and be better for next time. Whereas at competition, you want to be performing at your physical peak at that very moment. So the nutritional approaches of the two different scenarios is a little bit different. So in the build up to a competition, I like to use a high dose vitamin supplement, antioxidants, vitamin C and E, and I also like to use creatine. So let's start with creatine. Creatine is a naturally occurring compound which sits in your muscle cells and fuels really, really short bursts of high intensity exercise. So taking additional creatine might be able to improve your body's power. It might be helpful for events like vault and for holding really, really taxing uh, ring strength positions and things like that. There is some evidence that suggests that if you take creatine over a long period of time, it increases water retention, which makes your body heavier and it might be that if you're more powerful but you're also heavier, the benefits kind of negate and it doesn't actually add up to anything. So as a compromise, I take creatine acutely. I only take it for three to five days before a competition. And there is some research that suggests that taking creatine in this fashion does increase your power slightly without having significant water retention. Antioxidants protect cells from cellular damage via uh, compounds called free radicals. So free radicals are harmful chemicals which are produced in exercise and although preventing cell damage sounds like a good thing, in terms of training and in terms of regular usage this is actually not a great thing. Effective training produces lots of free radicals and it creates cellular damage. This damage is what induces the muscle to get stronger and adapt for next time. So it might be that if you took a high level of antioxidant supplements throughout a training phase, you would actually dampen the adaptation of your body to that training and you would be less strong at the end of that training phase. That being said, reducing cellular damage, staying fresh and being able to fight off fatigue is definitely a benefit 
in a competition scenario. Having a high concentration of antioxidants inside your muscles means that free radicals produced by exercise have less effect and cause less damage on the cells, which might be beneficial for fighting off fatigue. Might be good for more endurance aspects of gymnastics, like completing a floor routine or doing a dismount at the end of a long apparatus routine. And it also means that if you've got to do lots of competitions in short succession, you might be less likely to have soreness day to day. A lot of high level competitions take place over five or six days or even a week and gymnasts have to compete three or four days almost in a row. Oftentimes the last day of competition is the finals and that's the most important day of competition. So the gymnasts who've been able to fight off muscle soreness, who've recovered well, who've taken good nutrition, taken good supplements throughout those first few days and are the freshest for the finals, might be the gymnasts that are most likely to get the medals. That takes us to the end of all the supplements which I normally use, but there's one more supplement that I want to discuss very, very quickly, and that is supplement of vitamin B12. I don't need to take vitamin B12 because I'm a consumer of meat and animal products, but if there's any vegan or vegetarian athletes out there, make sure that you're taking a B12 supplement. Vitamin B12 is a strange one because it's one of the only, if not the only, vitamins and minerals that is only found in meat and animal products. So if you're not eating any meat or animal stuff, it might be that you're deficient in this particular vitamin. Vitamin B12 helps produce hemoglobin and aids your body's oxygen carrying capacity. So if you're deficient in B12, it might be that you have a lower aerobic capacity and you find it harder to get fitness adaptations. There's lots of health and performance benefits of being a vegan or vegetarian athlete. It's certainly possible. But if you are one, make sure that you're taking vitamin B12 on top of your normal diet to make sure that you've got that well-roundedness in your nutrition. Thanks very much for watching, guys. If you've got any comments or questions, please leave them down below. I will do my best to get back to you and give you some help. And I hope to bring more good content to you guys in the future. Cheers.